All right, sorry about that. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's having a fantastic evening. It's, uh, it's getting kind of chilly out there. Don't know how I feel about it. Chewie's getting up. All right, welcome to the weekly dev stream. People are against you. Oh no. Uh, so our Kickstarter is going. We've got another eight days left, so tell your friends, tell your family. We're still behind on the goals, so trying to catch up. And Chewy fell over. Chewy. This cat, I swear. He's just such an old man, and he just falls over all the time. There we go. All right, back in your bed. Save the drama for later. Anyway. So yeah, Kickstarter's still live. Get out there, tell your friends, tell your family. Uh, if you donated at the, uh, below the uh, $50 tier, you can upgrade to the $50 tier and get some pins and stickers. They are Kickstarter exclusive. So con consider upgrading if you haven't. Appreciate everyone's support. We're excited to um, go into this last week strong for the Kickstarter. And we're hoping we'll get a big upward momentum spike near the end here. That's usually the case for most Kickstarters. So once you appear on that ending soon tab of Kickstarter. People start to notice you a bit more. Hoping we'll get a big surge there, but still need your help. We bought Chewy a dino bed sheet for his pet bed. Yes, we did. <laughs> we did. He was uh, making a mess, so he has a bed sheet now, like a child. Because he is basically a child. <laughs> Hi Jess, thanks for hopping in. Speaking of hopping in, let's hop into some new features of Super Dungeon Designer. So last week we showed off the Lit Bomb. The Lit Bomb is a bomb that you can place down that will explode on a timer. You can link to it so that it can appear. So you can make some cool challenges around that. This week we have the Proximity Bomb. The Proximity Bomb will activate when you run into it. This is really cool because you can add a timer to these two, but also you can set it to zero seconds. So if you want it to explode instantly when a player runs into it, you can totally do that. So this is brand new, hot off the press as usual for the dev stream. So we're going to test it, check it out, see how it works and have some fun. So, if we look under bombs here, oh, also I think we did some updates to the spacing on the uh, paintbrush, so I want to show that real quick. We also added a little um, pointer to the paintbrush so that you can actually see where you're pointing at things. So that's kind of a nice change. Oh, <laughs> yeah, hang on. Failing all over the place today. So yeah, here's the, the new selector. So I spaced out a little better. And the paintbrush actually has this little pointer on it so that you can see where you're clicking, which helps a lot. So that's brand new and exciting. And when you select a color, it applies to both floor tiles and the walls. That was a small bug we had where it wasn't doing that. So let's show off the bombs. So now, so we had the uh, lip bomb, which we showed off last week. Uh, it will appear and then explode in a few seconds. You place it down just like a bomb, can damage the player. That's another thing bombs now damage the player. That's a recent update. 
So all forms of bombs will damage players, which is going to make four player co-op really fun, I think. <laughs> Can actually, you actually have a way to damage other players now, so maybe we'll end up with some uh, Bomberman inspired dungeons. Um, but here's the proximity bomb. So the proximity bomb appears blue until it's lit. Starts at one second, but you can keep clicking to add more time. And yeah, these will sit there until you walk into them. And then they ignite. Obviously, this has some pretty cool implications. You can do things where uh, you want a puzzle that, you know, some blocks are going to blow up and you need to, like, do something in the amount of time before the bomb blows up. Or you could use it as a way to, like, gatekeep the player from being able to get to a certain area. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do here with these. So if you want it to instantly explode, you can right-click to remove time. You can set these to zero. And, yeah, they're just going to blow up in your face. Pretty cool. You can also do that with the lip bombs now, too. Oh, cool. Okay, so lip bombs can go down to zero seconds as well. Wonder, wonder how the proximity bomb works in the spawning. I mean, I would imagine it just works, right? Oh yeah, we still need to add seconds to the text in the spawner. I'm looking into that. Doesn't look like you can set it to zero in the spawner either. So we'll look into that. But I love putting these in the spawner because it's like a constant trap now. And I don't think we have it in yet, but you should be able to activate them with weapons, which I don't think we've done yet. But let me see. Yeah, so we're still working on that. That is how many of those it's spawning. Oh, okay. No, it looks like it's actually going by the time though. Seems to be. So, with linking on these, let's see how that works. Hey, Sanjay, what's going on? You're just playing around with uh, your proximity bombs. So, linking to it will make it appear. But again, the proximity bomb doesn't blow up when it appears, like the lip bomb does. What's the prediction? Prediction for what? For how many bugs we'll find? If James will die to a bat, <laughs> it will definitely happen. Um, okay, so then linking from it, now I believe the way this is set up, when you link from it, it's going to trigger the thing when it explodes, not when it's activated.
I see a one next to Thomas's name, so I was wondering what the prediction question was. I did not see a prediction. <laughs> did someone put a prediction out? I should bring up my uh, my stream manager. I don't have it up. My creator dashboard. Um, yeah, let's see. Choose prediction outcome. Oh, okay. Will James die to a bat? Okay. I see it now. Nice. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll make sure to play a dungeon with a bat later. What's up, Chewie? Come here. Come here. Listen. Listen, we're going to get you set up with your own Twitch channel so that you can stream. But right now, this is my time to stream. Yeah. So get in your dinosaur bed. Lay down. Alright, anyway. So yeah. Uh, well, okay, that wasn't a good example. Let me up the time on that a little. <laughs> oh, Chewy. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, when you activate the bomb, once it explodes, that's when the thing triggers. Which I think makes sense. So, actually, I wonder if I put it to zero seconds, then put it in the spawner, will it keep that time? It does, okay. Nice. So, that's kind of cool. You can make something like this where. keeping the player from being able to access an area. Yeah, it worked. Pretty cool. There's always a workaround. So now you got a cool hazard. I mean, obviously not much different than like just having spikes there or something, right? But kind of neat because it, you know, respawns, so. You could also have like crumbly walls. And if those blow up, Yeah, you know, some enemies spawn. Now, I don't believe the proximity bombs, like I don't think enemies can trigger them. Let me double check that. And I think we want to keep it that way for the sake of like puzzles not breaking and stuff. Yeah.
You could do something where you're trying to time your... Trying to time your uh, Warthog aggro. That's neat. And I think you can put them on enemies. And this is kind of neat because now if I've got a room over here with a cracked wall, I can lure the bat over, feed it there. Oh, well, I probably won't do it. <laughs> lure the bat over. <laughs> Come on, bat, cooperate. Yeah, maybe I'll do it. Yeah. So there we go. There's a cool use for it. You know, you can have a room here where... coming through the bottom and there's this message that plays that's like um defeat the bat um or just away. You know, something a little cryptic. And obviously you'd want that to be like an optional room. Like this is maybe just treasure room. That's cool. Now, obviously, I didn't even need to use the proximity bomb there. I could have just used the lip bomb, but similar concept. All right, let's make something unique to the proximity bomb. Let's see. It'd be a good way to test this. We did show off being able to kind of like lure enemies over to the proximity bomb, which is cool. Alright, this this might be cool. I want to see if this is going to work the way I'm thinking. Do like a chain reaction by having a I mean again, okay, this isn't exclusive to the proximity bomb. 
we'll we'll test more with the proximity bomb in a second but i i want to try this really quick So we've got our room, we've got a proximity bomb, we'll trigger it. <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> that was awesome. I could do that all day. And the sound is actually really satisfying too. How does it feel if we do like one second each? People are gonna love using that, yeah, for sure. It smells like more troll potential. Yeah, we're kinda, we're really enabling the trolls lately. Yeah, I like the instant. The instant is better. But also can be used for puzzles. Yeah, I think there's there's big implications here for puzzles and cool stuff. Especially, um, we talked about later being able to trigger these remotely with like the bow and arrow, and um, and like being able to hit them with the sword so they can move. There's a, there's a lot of cool stuff that the bombs are going to open up. Um, especially if we add more ways to move these bombs other than just the frog glove. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which, by the way, I don't think we showed off the frog glove being able to move bombs last week. So let's show that, too. Because that is really cool. Conveyor belt will be nice to use with this. Yeah, yeah. Conveyor belt, I think, should be high up in the backlog. That's something we should probably try to get in during early access, because that's going to be so huge for making cool puzzles and mechanisms and stuff. Uh, we'll say two seconds is probably good. treasure. Both of those are activated. Gives you a key to there. I'm doing this room again because it's so cool. So good. <laughs> Okay, so now we have the frog glove. And we have these bombs that keep exploding over here. 
And we gotta time it. Ah! So we grab one and don't blow ourselves up. <laughs> it's not going great so far. All right. <laughs> Maybe a checkpoint in this room. Ooh, I got one of them. That's interesting. There we go. And I forgot to activate the checkpoint. So what happens if what happens if you put a zero second lip bomb in here? Okay, so just there's obviously a little bit of delay because the animation of the spawner actually opening and closing creates a bit of a delay. But this is cool because it creates an area you need to avoid. So this is actually pretty neat for like a boss fight. That's cool. You can create a room here where maybe you've just got to carefully navigate around. Oh, this room's kind of dumb. Because you can just walk, right? <laughs> and never mind. Forget that idea. Um. 
Okay, I think the best thing right now with the proximity bomb is being able to like lure enemies over and keep the player from getting to like certain areas. Let's see, what's a cool design we could do? get rid of these other ones. And... Yeah, what the heck? Spawn those into. Activating this is going to put the spikes down. Oh, wait, that's when it blows up. Activating this will put the spikes down and spawn all that. And then if these explode. It'll go back up. So you're on a timer. And if you get this, um, uh, yeah, let's take this out of the record. If you get this, then the spikes go down and all these go off. Okay. Oh wait, you don't <laughs> You don't have to trigger the bomb. <laughs> this is a bad <laughs> I'm tired, it's been a long day. <laughs> Alright, you want something more like this. Whatever, this is a bad puzzle. That's fine.
doing that should put them back down. Uh, Cause if you link from the bomb, it'll be when it blows up. I know, I just wanted to show like you could do a puzzle with these things, you know, like the crack blocks. Oh, I forgot to link from the crack blocks. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, you could just do from the bottom. But also, I like to over-engineer my designs. And we're going to make a bad dungeon because we're going to give a, the player a key and then immediately have them use it. Which is bad game design. <laughs> I wonder if there's a unique thing with the proximity bomb yet. Because that puzzle could technically be done with the timer switch. Yeah, true. I think the proximity bomb will be a lot more puzzly <clears throat> once... Um, once you can move it with other things, and also once you can light it from a distance with like the bow, that's gonna be pretty cool. I think being able to, to hit it with the bow is the biggest thing that'll help the proximity bomb. But yeah, the biggest puzzle right now seems to be like just luring enemies to it, you know? you can have a spawner here that's giving you proximity bombs. Although, actually, yeah, I guess the lip bomb. I wonder if we could do something like arrows move the bomb, but the fire rod lights the fuse. Could be interesting. Once we can activate them via arrows, you can use it to open paths remotely. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty cool. Actually, uh, Sanjay, I think what we should do, I think the bow should activate it. The fire rod should cause any proximity bomb to instantly explode, regardless of its timer. Like the fire just makes it blow up. Because then that has even more cool implications. Yeah. Yeah, you can make a dungeon called like Hot Potato. Have a couple players. I can't really test it right now, but. Say so you've got something like this. I want there to be some way to push the bomb forward unless that's the plan is for the sword. Um, yeah, I'm thinking we'll end up going that route. I liked, um, I think it was Matt's suggestion to, you can hit the bomb with the sword and it makes it bounce. So like you could hit it over a pit. I think I like that idea.
I think, does this reach? We need to move this over a little. Now, obviously, this could be done, too, with just a lit bomb and a spawner, right? So this isn't super unique to the proximity bomb. But it's kind of neat because it doesn't light until you grab it. Like, until it gets to you, so. Yeah, it's something a little unique. Thomas, you might I think you stepped away. Did you see the chain reaction room? You might have missed it. If you're watching, you, you got to watch this. It's beautiful. It's so good. <laughs> Woo. See what else? Give the player dash boots and then This isn't too different from uh, the proximity spikes, but the main difference here is that you can come back afterwards. So you can create a room where You gotta do something like that. Here's a question. Should the explosion from a proximity bomb trigger other proximity bombs? So 
yeah, there's kind of another unique example. I guess you're technically safe over here, so should. Seems like maybe, yeah, yeah. Just. <clears throat> Actually, it should be one second. There we go. Same with lip bombs, yeah. So here's a room where you have to follow the path. Guess you could shortcut here. This might not work how I'm thinking it will. Let's see. Yeah, I guess here you could just go down. Yeah, it actually needs to be like that.
pretty cool. So if I try to go over here, I'm gonna get blown up. I guess once you've done that, then you can just go like this. So. So we could add a timer here. We want that to be open. Wait. No. Why am I confusing myself? Okay. Okay. Right. So yeah, it needs a little more time. Although I guess you do have the dash boots. So yeah, the dash boots part should be after this. I don't want the player to have dash boots. So nice that you can just rearrange dungeons now, like this. So nice. And we gotta fill those rooms or something, but that's fine. So this needs like two more seconds, I think. Seems good. Maybe we can go down a second, actually. It's a little too close. Yeah, you can make it, but it's like very precise. We'll we'll leave it at seven. Let's 
Yeah, pretty neat. The bombs are really fun to play around with. There's some spikes here, actually. One spike. Actually, no, we'll just do, <laughs> do a closed door. Okay. And then in this room, Got bombs. And we'll do them all two seconds. You gotta use the frog glove to defeat some enemies. Now we don't want you to be able to hit the enemies into the pit. So... You probably just want spikes here, actually. So I'm pretty sure you can... Oh no, you can't for grapple over spikes. Um, we could do well, we could do a pit here. And the one back here doesn't really matter. We just don't want the enemies to get back there. So what we can do instead... I think... Do enemies avoid floor switches? No. Okay. Uh, they avoid... We avoid warps. Do warps. Oh, you know, it'd be cool. Um, You had a timer switch here. 
<coughs> Excuse me. And then Alright, there's a lot of timing going on here. Can actually go like this probably to make it a little more fun. So now you can either try to time it by grabbing the bomb, or you can hit this and try and time it so that also the bomb could like stop on this, which I think it will. It should. Let's see what happens. And I think instead of enemies, just do switches. Let's see. Right, I need a front one. Oh, I have a sword. Okay. Yeah, the timing's kind of weird because these just keep blowing up. All right, so this. That doesn't quite do what I wanted it to. Oops. So, we'll just keep it simple. Timing is so tricky. Hey, Kablam! What's up, Kevin? How's it going, man? I 
we got one. <laughs> Let's just do that, make it simpler. Hey, Coco, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. That was such a fun stream yesterday. Thanks for doing that. We had a blast. Heck yeah. Have you, uh, have you jumped in and made any more dungeons? Is our online browse dungeon just full of your dungeons now? <laughs> <laughs> you retired. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Um, if you get a chance, check out... Um, there's some really good dungeons by Blue Blade. Blue Blade made a ton of really good dungeons. Um, any of the dungeons with Phantom in the name were made by Phantom Triforce in the chat. He's one, another one of the programmers on the game. Those are really good. Dungeons by Tony are really good. So there's there's some other really good ones in there too. Don't require don't don't retire just yet. That's all I'm saying. so fast. <laughs> We're playing around with proximity bombs, a new item we just added to the game. Getting those tested out. Do that and then have it so when you blow up all the blocks, the door opens. And then we need to do more stuff with cracked walls.
the right other way. We want Yeah, give the player a minute here to figure out what's going on. Let's move this room down a little. Okay, and then they'll get here and be like, what the heck, what do I do? Oh, frog love, and then they grab a bomb and open that up. Oh, although, although I guess you could just frog grapple these bombs. Let's do this. This will be fun. Um, So you'll frog grapple over there. I actually do poison. And then we're gonna have these lip bombs spawn right here so it's like is this the studio's first game uh no actually we had two smaller games that we came out with before this um so one was called drag and drop and it's a puzzle platformer where you can like drag in different objects to help you get through um the level we have a game called memory match and catch and that's like a memory style game where you make matches that get added to your collection and that one is on mobile um and for both of those games, we actually have deals with um, uh, the Presto Tablet Company. So you can find them in restaurants like uh, some Applebee's. You can find them in Red Lobster, um, a couple other restaurants like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, this is the first like really bigger, ambitious game that we've kind of taken on. Let's see how that room does.
Oh, interesting. These got way out of sync. Hmm. Very interesting. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's not set to one, is it? Well, it should be. Try entering the room. Dash boots. Oh, okay, yeah, it's working how you'd expect. It's just that these ones spawn so much faster than the others because they're only set to one second. Okay. I see. So this isn't really actually doing what I want it to. That part was pretty cool, though. Actually, we can probably change up this room a bit and those to zero. <laughs> oh my god, you gave the ghost sunglasses. That's awesome. <laughs> He's so spooky and so cool. that. I'd say his future is so bright he needs shades, but you know, he's a ghost. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, this room is just for funsies. It's not doing anything crazy. Oh, that's interesting. You get kind of like a weird screen pan if you pick up an item right after you enter a door. Like cuts off the camera. Oh yeah, I didn't give the player a way back.
invisible bombs. Yeah, chaos. <laughs> You've made pyrotechnics. Yeah. <laughs> All the chaos. All right, cool. You do something with this room here. All right, and then we'll have this be the end room. Have another cool To see what this looks like in a dark room so let's make this room dark and when this last one goes off it's gonna light all these torches give you a bunch of gold group so it all spawns together. Alright, we have our end of the dungeon. We delete all this extra stuff. Alright, in here Oh, that's a good question. Can you push proximity bomb with a block? You can. Okay. Interesting. It also, like, does it go up against the block? It, like, moves a full tile? <laughs> that's interesting. It should probably wait for the block and then get pushed. How do do other items behave that way? Actually, I've never noticed. So you put down like a heart. Yeah, the heart like goes up against it. Try to move the lip on. Okay. Interesting. Okay, yeah, it looks like the lip bomb behaves as expected. It, it like goes up against it. It's the proximity bomb for some reason. So I'd say that's a minor bug. Using the wrong collider, okay. Cool, cool. We found a bug, woo! So you do that, and that lets you get down here.
This would be a cracked wall. Switch here. So you'll press that down with block. It's going to put the proximity bomb here. The switch will spawn in. Which will enable that. Uh, right there. Uh, right there. This will be a repeating switch. Bring that up. But it'll put these spikes up. Let's put a frog glove thingy on the wall here. And fly through here, it spawns in. Actually, I'm curious if while you're flying through the air with the frog glove, if that'll trigger proximity mines, proximity bombs. Let's see. Just do the one.
Okay, and then you want to push this all the way back here. Onto that. Spawn in your last proximity bomb. Up here. Something like that. I don't know what I'm doing. This is a weird puzzle. It's not even good. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, all right, that looks mostly complete. Let's just try it from the beginning and see what we've got here. Again, not a full-fledged dungeon, just kind of trying to test out the new proximity bomb. Uh, what did I do here? <laughs> What was this? Okay, I think... Do we just have an empty room here? Yeah, I guess we did. Okay. Alright, let's see what happens. We're rolling with it. I do need to sleep very badly. <laughs> So the bomb drops from the bat, can go into the secret area, Get some gold. That room makes it all worth it. And the frog glove. those get our key walk around here for no reason and here I made a mistake because you can just grapple the bomb although yeah you wouldn't want to grapple the bomb because you want this to go off. but still that's not great that down one. Blow these out. Oh, I guess... Can you keep pushing this one? Yes, yeah, so we want to probably change this into a one push so you can't use it to weigh this down. Which, wait, did I even do anything with this? I didn't do anything with this. <laughs> Alright, well. This room might need some work. Okay, spikes are up now. Cool. Okay. Uh, then we want to come down here. Opens that up. Push that down. It's supposed to do something. I do not have the dash boots. So that's what we'll do with pushing that switch down. We'll have it give you the dash boots. So 
we will... Uh, where can we put this? Well, first of all, let's change this back into a single. And then... I think we gotta expand this down a little. Beautiful. Yes, I did just name it Bombs Away. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> ah. I don't know why I have to fall in the pit every time, too. I'm just going to fall in the pit now because the checkpoint's right there and I want full hearts. Alright, so I'll head here to the over-engineered room. That's okay. And then over here. A lot of soft locks in this level, obviously, because it's just for testing purposes. I could frog glove that bomb here, and that would actually kind of work too. Because then I could use that one here. There we go. Mesh boots. Okay, that kind of worked. Kind of puzzling. Not bad. It's a room. Now we have dash boots, we can do this. The 
Pyrotechnics are real. Okay, it's gonna be cool. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, GG. Hire James for your next concert. That's right. Do it. It will be explosive. All right. Well, this was a good stream. We got some bugs found. Got some small things we wanted to change. Nothing too crazy blew up except for the bombs themselves, which is what we want. Uh, I think we'll wrap things up here. Really appreciate everyone hanging out, swinging by. This was a lot of fun. We will be back again next week for another dev stream to show off what's new with the game. Friendly reminder that the Kickstarter is live. Tell your friends. Tell everyone you know. Tweet it out on social. Tell your grandma. Kickstarter is up. Definitely need help. We are behind on the goals. And we've got about eight days to go. So... We're really hopeful that things are going to spike up as we get near the end of the Kickstarter. People see it on the uh, ending soon page of Kickstarter and start to back it, but it's going to be close. We're going to need your help. So please get the word out any way you can. And thanks for hanging out, everyone. This was super fun. Um, we have our Discord link down below. We've got a Steam page up where you can wishlist the game. Go check it out on Steam. And check out the Kickstarter. Appreciate everyone hanging out. I'm going to play us out with the trailer. And I think we'll actually see if we can uh, do a raid. We'll see if anyone's on. After the trailer plays, I'm going to try to do a raid. So hang out in the chat. We'll see if there's anybody. Uh, now that we know some people on Twitch, if anyone's streaming. All right. Well, thanks all. Everybody have a fantastic night. We'll see you next time. Go raid Kalora. Kalora was someone that um, stopped by the booth at PAX and they were super cool. Let's go raid them. We are unable to raid at this time. Okay, they must have raids turned off. All right. Well, that was the only person I saw on there. So we'll call it there. Thanks all. Have a good night, everyone.